Hello, hello, and welcome to the video. Today, I am going to be showing you how I use the De La Rowney System 3 acrylic inks. This video is in collaboration with De La Rowney, and I am so excited to be working with them again and showing y'all some of my favorite techniques with some of my favorite supplies. I'm going to be working on wood today because the System 3 acrylic inks are perfect for mixed media and you can use them on a diff bunch of different surfaces. I've used them on wood in the past and I really love the way that it looks. In order to start this, I wanted to do a kind of pour situation. So I mixed the De La Rowney pouring medium with some water and then I poured it all over the wood piece and then I started dripping inks into it. Then I tilted the wood around and allowed gravity to do its thing and let the paint pour and flow in lots of different directions until I was relatively happy with it. This can take a little bit of time and I definitely recommend having some kind of tray underneath while you're doing this to catch any ink. You can also use a little cup and reuse the paint later. I kind of forgot about my cups when doing this, but that's okay because I have my handy dandy pouring tray. Um, then I went ahead and was like, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I used my blowtorch on this. That might be interesting, uh, because I was feeling intrigued and curious that day. And as you can see, what happened is it flash dries the top of the acrylic ink and it creates these really cool little cracks. And I thought that was a really, really cool texture. So I was very happy with how that turned out. Once everything was dry, I wanted to do a second pour on top of the first pour. This creates depth and adds interest, and it's just something that I really like to do. It's kind of part of my style. So I went ahead and mixed some of the pouring medium with some water, painted it over the top, and then poured more paint on top of it. And then I used my hairdryer to blow out the paint and create some interesting texture. Once I was happy with it, I let it dry and I drew my sketch on using some pastel pencils. And then I took the inks and started painting on top. So these inks are awesome because you can use them to create pores and do a lot of fluid artwork like I did at the beginning, but you can also use them to do the actual painting in between. I like to sandwich artwork between pores and paint on top of pores. I think it's a really interesting technique and so it works really, really well for that because I don't have to switch supplies in between and I can just do everything with one supply. Depending on how much acrylic pouring medium you used at the start, your painting might be a little bit shiny. So if your paint is watered down, then it may resist a little bit. Just go ahead and use as much paint as possible and just build up that first layer. Even if it's really, really thin, it's okay because the second layer will stick perfectly. I have this idea of this butterfly coming out of an old fashioned alarm clock and the arm, the hands on the alarm clock will be set to 1111 and the butterfly's wings will say 1111. So that's kind of what I'm working on here. And I'm starting with the base layer, which doesn't really have a lot of color. It's mostly black and white and it's just me establishing the overall shading and where things are going to go. I'm using an angular shading brush for most of this because I can get really fine details and I can also get large larger areas and I can do my blending with it. So this Princeton uh, Select Angular Shading Brush is perfect for that. So continuing with my idea, I used a dark Payne's Gray to paint 1111 on the wings of the butterfly. I'm not worrying too much about specific detail right now. I'm trying to establish some areas of pattern, but I'm not going into the veins on the butterfly's wings or too much shading or anything like that. This is just an underpainting and a lot of it's going to get covered up with pores and further shading. I did forget one little thing on the clock, but I do fix it later, but I forgot to record it. But if you know anything about old fashioned clocks, then there is a little piece of metal connecting the two little bells. And I, I do add that in later for anyone concerned about that. But I go ahead and add in my third pour using the same technique as before. I poured on the pouring medium this time and then added in water instead of mixing it together in a cup. And then I poured on a bunch of paint and I used my brush to kind of move it around and my spray bottle to thin out areas. If you really want to do this technique, then when you do your pours on top of your paintings, you want to use a spray bottle to control the areas that are thinner so that you're making sure that you can still see the important parts of your painting underneath. Once I have that third pour on, I go in with my 
fifth layer and I am starting to get into some of the details. So I start by covering the entire thing with a translucent white. So just a little bit of paint and a lot of water. And then I go in with some translucent blue and start establishing some areas of color. By working in thinner layers, I'm still allowing some of those colors from the pore to peek through and some of that texture to peek through. And I'll continue to work this way throughout the entire piece. I'm adjusting some of the areas of shading and re-going in over some of those patterns to bring them back up. And then I'm starting to add in the veins of the butterfly. This was an area where I really struggled with the symmetry and you'll see the consequences for that action later, but in, in, in at the time I was doing my best, I was quite tired. So, you know, uh, symmetry and butterflies are hard. By this point, I had also realized that butterflies' bottom wings are smaller than their top wings, so I tried to shave off a little bit of bulk to the wing, although it's still a little bit too big. Then I go in with some white and start establishing the white areas of the wing and the blue areas of the wing, just kind of reestablishing that pattern and adding a tiny bit of base shading to the inside of those veined areas. And as you can see, I really do like to start loose and then build up into detail. It really, really helps. I've talked about this a million times on my channel, but I cannot stress it enough how much it helps. And then I'm going back over with that 1111 and um, kind of drawing that in and making sure that that is still visible because obviously that's kind of an important part of the piece going through and adding in more blue. And this blue is super, super opaque, so I have to be careful when working with it and neat with it. And then just re-adding in the black, going back in and re-establishing the areas of the clock that got covered. And as you can see, I finally added in that metal piece because I looked up a reference for a clock. So pro tip, look up references before you start drawing. Don't know why I didn't really do that because it would have saved me on the butterfly issue as well, but I thought I knew what a butterfly looks like. I thought I knew what a clock to look like. You know, you don't. Just look it up. Just save yourself the hassle. Don't be me. Um, going back in with another layer of pores because I really want these pores to stain the butterfly wings and add this cool texture to the butterfly wings. So that's what I'm going for here. But I also don't want to completely cover everything up. So I used a little bit of paper towel to lift things up in certain areas. And now I'm going back in with a super, super fine brush. I love this brush. It's by Princeton Select and it's an angled brush and it's awesome. It's like angled and it's got a cute, super tiny tip and it's so good for adding in these fine details. So I'm going through and I am really being careful and trying to make sure the symmetry is matched up on both sides, which spoiler alert, it wasn't. And it took me a really long time to correct a lot of it and it hurt my brain a lot and I never want to do it again. So I'm going to be extra careful next time I draw a butterfly to make sure that I get the symmetry right the first time and don't get in this situation. So if you decide to draw a butterfly, take your time with the symmetry at the start. Trust me on that one. So while I'm working on the details, I just want to talk real quick about the System 3 ink range. So they are acrylic inks, like I mentioned. So they flow like watercolors, but they're permanent when they're dry because they are acrylic. But while they're wet, you can still kind of lift the paint. You'll see me do that a little bit later when I make a really big mistake. Um, so they're really, really versatile and you can use them for a bunch of different things. Like you can see that I've used them for pouring and dripping, but I've also used them for painting. You can also use them with like markers and airbrushing, dip pens, pretty much anything you can think of you can use these inks with and they are made with pigment not dyes so the colors are really permanent and light fast they're also really opaque um, and you can also use them for like outdoor projects so that's really cool and they have 28 colors including two metallics gold and silver and you know me I love my metallics so when you're working on the details of your piece I recommend going slow and taking your time one of the reasons that I work from large to small is because it gives me the mental space to work up to doing those details and feel like they're less intimidating than when you start trying to put details in right from the beginning. It just like really helps you to figure out where things are going to be and get the details in the right spot so you're not constantly redoing things. 
I did add a couple details and shading to the clock, but I forgot to move the painting. So you did miss a little bit of that, but you kind of can see what I did. And then I continue to put in these white areas so that I'm defining more of where that blue is going to be because I do want it to be blue and white. And I'm using some very, very small little brush strokes just to blend out between that blue and white. I mix the blue and white together to create a medium blue tone and just use that to feather things out so that everything looks nice and blended. And I just keep doing that, adding in white, adding in blue and blending them until everything looks the way that I want it to. Like I said, this is definitely the most time consuming part of the piece because it is where you're going to put in all your little details. So whether you're painting a butterfly or not, don't be afraid to take your time on this piece. I'm adding in some little dots for the patterns and cleaning up the rest of the wing shape and going around that little heart area so that it looks like a heart and just continuing to work on those wings. This took me quite some time as you can see and there's not a whole lot more to talk about it. <laughs> I'm just continuing to add in those details, darkening the 1111 on the wings and just making sure that everything looks nice and neat for my final pour. This is really the final time that I'm going to be doing a lot of details so I really want to make sure that everything is exactly how I want it before I do my next step of the painting. Adding in a little bit of black to the center of those dots and also adding just a wee bit of shading to the body of the butterfly just so that it has a little bit of three-dimensionality to it. And then I added these black stripes onto the sides of the wings so that they looked a little bit bigger and then I decided that I still needed the bottom wings to be smaller so that it looked more like a butterfly so I painted around those and made them a little smaller. Smaller. Then I needed to work on the face of the clock, adding in a little bit of shading and just starting to figure out where the light is going to hit on the clock and the overall shading of the clock. Then I worked on that bottom wing, just re-establishing it since I changed the shape of it. I needed to go in and re-establish some of the shapes and do a lot of the blending work that I had done on the upper wing. This took some time as did the upper wing as you guys saw, but I'm using the same technique using my small little brush and feathering out the brush strokes to blend the blue into the white. Um, I recommend using not too much paint when you're feathering because otherwise it won't blend, it'll just lay down the paint. The more paint you use, the less blending you're going to get. So if you wanna lay down paint on top of wet paint, use more paint. If you wanna blend, use less paint. That's kind of a good rule of thumb to work with when it comes to blending. I know blending can be kind of tricky. You can also blend wet and wet. So you can take your paint that's on the paper and then you can add other color to it. So for example, I'm just adding some white to this light blue and it blends out into a lighter blue. And it works really well for adding in highlights and just blending things in general. Just a few more touch-ups on the black areas and going back over the veins in the bottom half of the wing so that everything looks nice and neat. And then we're almost done with the details portion of the butterfly. Um, just a few little bits more of shading and then jumping back down to the clock to really establish the three-dimensionality of those little bells up at the top. Um, working with mostly grays and blacks here, but I do put a little bit of blue in to those blacks and grays. I find it's best to not work with a pure black most of the time. There are occasions that call for it, um, but often mixing your own blacks can look darker than a pure black, and it's going to add more depth and color harmony to your piece. Speaking of color harmony, because this clock would be a little reflective, I went ahead and added in some blue around it so that it was kind of like it was reflecting the colors around it. And then I went ahead and started adding my ticks in. I'm really bad at this. I'm not good at clocks. I can't tell the time on an analog clock very easily. I almost failed a grade because I couldn't do it. So the first time that I put these ticks down, it was definitely wrong. So I used a Q-tip and some water to erase them and then painted back over the top just to kind of fix some of the areas that had come up. So I kind of had to go back over and repaint the whole face of the clock because I messed up the ticks. But that's the great thing about these paints because they are super opaque. I was able to just go over them really quickly to repaint those ticks and just reestablish the face of it. And then I finally got it right, um, which was super exciting. And then I drew on the hands of the clock, which I also got wrong the first time. Um, clocks are really my nemesis, but I finally got there and I drew the hands of the clock pointing to 1111. Once I had all those details in, it was time to go in with a final pour. I mixed together the pouring medium with some water and some darker colored ink to create a 
thin layer of blue and then I mixed in and dropped in some other ink blue inks and then using a lot of water and some paper towel I smeared that across the whole piece so that it didn't cover up too much of the butterfly but it did tint it just a little bit especially down in that clock area I just wanted to make sure that it still had that layered effect where everything was sandwiched between one another once that was done, I added in some final little details, darkened a couple things, re-added that uh, little area where the bells are connected between the clock, and that was it. That is my finished piece. I hope that you guys like it, and I hope that you found it helpful, and it gave you some ideas and inspiration um, techniques to use with these inks. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video, and have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys.